So if Attorney General Merrick Garland is truly concerned with the legitimacy of the Department of Justice, there is only one thing that must be done. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So I just want to do a short video because I just finished an appearance with Eamon on MSNBC and we were talking about, you know, the latest news on the January 6th select committee front. And I just wanted to talk about the legitimacy of the Department of Justice for a minute. My professional home for decades. It's an organization that frankly, I was very proud to be a part of and I have great affection for, I have great respect for, but I am troubled. I think one thing we can all agree on is that Merrick Garland, the Attorney General, cares deeply about the reputation and about the legitimacy of the Department of Justice. But if he wants to win back, and I use that term advisedly, and I'll talk about why in a minute, if he wants to win back the legitimacy and the reputation of the Department of Justice, he needs to move out like yesterday. Here's the example I want to use. Jeffrey Clark, a treasonous former high DOJ official. This is the guy who joined Donald Trump's conspiracy and was prepared to do his corrupt bidding by weaponizing the Department of Justice and using it to tell the battleground states, oh, lots and lots of fraud. Y'all just should go ahead and appoint alternate electors, you know, electors for Donald Trump, because we're going to be investigating all this horrible fraud, all of which was a lie. And that was a high DOJ official, Jeffrey Clark, doing Donald Trump's corrupt bidding. And 18 months later, after he did Donald Trump's corrupt bidding, after he was in a conspiracy with Donald Trump to defraud the United States, to commit offenses against the United States, to obstruct an official proceeding, the certification of Joe Biden's win, 18 months after he did all of that, he just had his phone seized? How long have we known Jeffrey Clark as a high DOJ official committed crimes and the very organization he was a member of, the Department of Justice, took 18 months to seize his phone as possible evidence? That's not a good look for the Department of Justice. That's not a timely investigation. And I'm going to say this, but it shakes me to my core, friends. And this kind of, I think, flew under the radar screen. Yes, we learned that Jeffrey Clark's phone was seized pursuant to a warrant. But it wasn't even a warrant that was obtained by the Department of Justice Federal Prosecutors. It was a warrant that was obtained by the in Inspector General's Office for the Department of Justice. Now, yes, that is an organization within DOJ that, among other things, can investigate misconduct of its own, but it feels like they should have leapfrogged right over that and like a year ago or more, Federal criminal prosecutors should have gotten a warrant to search Jeffrey Clark's phone, his computer, his house, and frankly, to indict him, to arrest him, to flip him, to work their way up the criminal food chain. How it is, we are still apparently treading water 18 months later, and now we have witnesses being tampered with by Team Trump. Cassidy Hutchinson and the FBI 
should have been knocking on somebody's door at 6 a.m. 48 hours ago following up on witness tampering allegations. It feels like DOJ is treading water and I don't understand why. I'm not giving up hope and I'm not suggesting Donald Trump and his co-conspirators will not be indicted. They have to be. Because if they're not, that spells the end of our democracy. Because the 2024 presidential candidate, whether Ron DeSantis or some other Trump wannabe, gets to commit all the same crimes that Donald Trump has been committing, starting with campaign finance violations and Russian interference, right up through inciting an insurrection, a seditious conspiracy, and treason. We get to experience it all over again in 2024 if the Department of Justice doesn't indict Trump and company. I'm going to say it again. I believe they will because I can't conceive of the Department of Justice just giving our democracy away to the likes of Donald Trump and John Eastman and Jeffrey Clark and Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell and Steve Bannon and Roger Stone, and Michael Flynn, and Mark Meadows, and the rest of the folks over in Congress who requested pardons from Donald Trump because they knew they committed crimes, and they knew the only way they would get away with those crimes is if their co-conspirator Donald Trump pardoned them. But the other way they can get away with their crimes is if they're never charged for those crimes by the Department of Justice. Yes, I've raised my voice and my blood pressure. Yes, I'm frustrated. Yes, I'm trying to practice patience. But it shouldn't have taken 18 months to simply take Jeffrey Clark's phone, for goodness sake. Because justice matters and timely justice matters. Friends, thank you for bearing with me through my rant. Tomorrow's another day to fight for justice. And I know you'll be there with me shoulder to shoulder because we are all in this mess together. Together is the only way we're going to get through it. As always, friends, please stay safe. Please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.